Creating a resume can feel overwhelming. Too many templates, too much advices, and honestly, you are never quite sure what actually works, right? You can have solid skills and experience, but if your resume isn't structured and clear, recruiters might never even see it. According to a research, if your resume is reviewed by a real person, you have got around seven seconds to draw their attention. Seven seconds. So let's talk about how to make those seven seconds count. Before we dive in, if you are new here, my name is Valerie. I am a QA engineer and mentor at Academify Tech Bootcamp, where we help people like you to become a tech professionals from scratch or level up your existing skills. So hit that big fat thumb up button below, subscribe, and let's get started. Number one, there is no perfect resume. Let's start here. There is no single right way to create a resume. You will see 100 different templates online and everyone claims there's the best one. The truth is the best resume is the one that gets you results. If your version gets callbacks, that's great. If not, it's time to improve, experiment, and tweak. Keep it simple and ATS friendly. Please stop using these fancy design templates with graphics, icons, and columns. They look nice, but most of the applicant tracking systems can't read them. And if ATS can't scan your file, your resume might never even reach to a recruiter. Please create your resume in Google Documents or Word. Just black text on white background, simple fonts and clear section titles. No photos. Please do not include photos to your resume in the United States. Not because of any specific rule, but because it can lead to unconscious judgment about things that have nothing to do with your skills. Keep your resume focused on your experience and achievements. If someone wants to see you, they can find you on LinkedIn. Keep it relevant. Only include information about experience that adds value to the role you're applying for. If you used to be a dental assistant, that's a great experience, unless it connects to a QA role. If not, skip it. Your resume should show that you are capable to do a QA job. Do not overload your resume with acronyms or jargons. I'm not telling you to exclude it completely. Do not fill your resume with technical terms with no context. Remember, your first reviewer is usually a recruiter or HR. Make sure even non-technical person can understand the key points in your resume. Customize for every job. If you send 100 applications and didn't her back, don't be stubborn. It is time to change something. Read the job description. Highlight the key tools or skills they emphasize. The most important ones are usually the first bullet points in the job description. If needed, learn new tools. Even small changes can make a difference like reordering bullet points or rephrasing one line, can move your resume from ignored to shortlisted. Be concise. Your resume is not your autobiography. It is your sales pitch. Keep it one page max. Of course, if you have more than 10 years of experience and a lot of projects behind your back, make it two pages. Each line in your resume should add new information or proof of results. Do not repeat yourself in the resume. 
By the way, not everyone can pick up things easily and get a job offer on their own. And that's totally fine. I took a test automation bootcamp at Cutify to learn from them. And now I work as a QA engineer and a mentor to help people like myself in the past. So if you would like to learn test automation or to improve your existing skills, feel free to schedule one-on-one -on -one consultation with me by following the link below this video. Make your summary section count. The summary section is usually the first thing a recruiter sees. So grab their attention with achievements. For example, QA engineer with five plus years of experience, improving test efficiency by 20%, mentoring junior testers, and supporting cross-platform releases. This summary is concise, strong, and result-driven. Treat your summary section as an elevator pitch. It should be short, four to five lines, and it should make someone want to keep reading your resume. Add measurable metrics. Add numbers whenever you can. They make your work real and credible. For example, created 30 plus automated tests in Playwright, improving test coverage by 20%. Numbers tell your story better than adjectives ever could. Use this formula. Accomplished X as measured by Y by doing Z. Skip the buzzword. Let's be honest. We all are great team players, proactive and detailed oriented. Those words don't stand out anymore. Instead, show your attention to details through examples. For instance, created more than 200 detailed bug reports covering edge cases and inconsistencies missed during development. That's show a real attention to details, so no buzzword needed. Next one. Do not include references upon request in your resume. If they want, they will ask for it. Instead, save this space in your resume for valuable information. Also, do not include any personal information like marital status or your hobbies, unless it is relevant to the job you're applying for. The last but not least, your resume should sell your experience. Don't just summarize it or list the tasks you were responsible for. You are not writing a job description. You are showing impact. Your resume should be result-driven, confident, and professional. It is your first impression. Your resume doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to make someone say, hmm, I want to talk to this person. Let me actually show you an example of a well-structured resume so you can see how everything we just discussed looks in practice. Let's start from the top. Let me remove this one. Here, include your location, phone number, um, email, and make sure your email sounds professional, not something you created when you were 11. Um, add links to your GitHub portfolio and LinkedIn profile. Also, double check that all links are active. Here, always update the title for the position that you are applying for. So if the position is QA, QA Automation Engineer, just update it to make sure it matches. Okay, next we have summary section. A lot of people from this YouTube channel have asked me to help them to improve their English and their pronunciation as they want to become tech professionals, but English is not their native language. So especially for people like you, I did open up this YouTube channel where you can learn and improve your English and particularly articulation completely for free. You can find the link right there. Let's continue. As I mentioned earlier, this is your quick pitch. In just a few sentences, you should highlight your experience, impact, and what you're best at. 
For example, here we mention automation tools like Playwright and uh, Cypress. Um, also, we mention key achievements like reducing bugs or regression time and communication uh, skills like collaboration with developers to, re to resolve issues fast. All backed by numbers. Actually, the communication is not backed by numbers, but that's totally fine. Then we do have skills section. Notice how it is grouped by categories. Automation, manual testing, web technologies, mobile testing tools. That structure makes it much easier for recruiters and ATS systems to scan through quickly. The next one is the experience section, probably the most important part. Each role starts with company name right here, company A, a title right under the company name, and dates right here, followed by location. All bullet points are concise. They begin with strong action verbs like build, manage, develop, collaborate, accelerate it. And if you're still working at the company, make sure to use present, present tense, not past tense. Also, each line should focus on results, metrics, improvements, or tools used. Here you can see that we do have some measurable metrics, like uh, achieving a 20% reduction in total test execution time, or ensuring thorough documentation of testing activities and 97% traceability. If you include numbers in your resume, be sure you can explain how it was calculated. It is very important. And finally, we have the education section. Here you can put any relevant education, any certificates that you got. Definitely you can include any projects you have worked on, especially if they show real hands-on experience. I hope this gave you a better idea on how to structure your resume, especially if you are just starting out or looking for your first tech job. And if you would like me to review your resume and give feedback, feel free to 